Now, this particular webinar is called the Not Self Redefined. And we're going to give you 12 solutions for the monkey mind. And that monkey mind is something that we're all too familiar with. Basically, it's that little voice inside of your head that's talking about yourself and judging and narrating and all these things that it does. And it tells you what to do, you know, it tells you what to do. So as you are waiting here for us to really kick it off, I want to ask you a question. So again, welcome. What is the most often repeated thought you think that makes you shrink that thought you think that makes you shrink that thought that you know drives you nuts drives you crazy what is that thought is it the i'm not good enough thought is it nobody pays attention to me is it nobody understands me what is that thought that you think please enter your thought into the chat window if you'd like to participate and just share in this journey of discovery and revelation to eliminate distortions and the not self tendencies of the mind inside the head about the self to convince you manipulate you distort your uh, perception of reality to think that that thought is you, that that thought is even yours, that that thought is something that is true. Because this is the transformation that I want you all to experience today. That thought that bothers you, that thought that disturbs you, that thought that you think you're responsible for. So I'll wait a moment to see if there's some thoughts coming in. Uh, yeah, who am I? I'm not lovable. I don't have enough knowledge. I'm not good enough. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You should know what you want to do and how to do it. Definitely not enough, not worth listening to, not strong enough. And am I doing the right thing? Can I do this successfully? What if I'm not good enough or received poorly by others? I have to do this to ensure my security in the future. I will always be alone. Thank you so much for your honesty, for sharing your thoughts. Now, I want you to remember that thought that you think that you think is yours. You are not responsible for what you think. And I know this might be hard to make as a shift, a shift in your awareness, a shift in your intelligence, a shift in the way that you perceive your reality. So that thought, hold on to that thought. Don't believe it. It's a liar. It's not true, <laughs> but hang on to that thought. And hopefully by the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to the next time you see, hear, feel the distortion of that thought that berates you, that negates you, that makes you feel sad and lonely and depressed, that thought you think that makes you shrink. I can lead you to a place where you can recognize that that is a lie, that that is not real, that that is not true. What is the monkey mind, my friends? What is the not self redefined? Your monkey mind, that voice inside of your head about yourself, that voice inside of the head about yourself is not who you are. And as you look at my presentation here, you can see that I've got lots of monkey mind voices. I've got lots of voices out here that hang around, that distort reality. And before my human design experiment, when I was living my not self life before 2012 and beyond, back to when I was born in 77, the mind convinced me to do many, 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 many things that were out of integrity, out of alignment with my true self, my authentic self. And I can tell you from experience that even though the not self mind doesn't go away, what can happen is you lose that belief in it, in it knowing what's best for you and it telling you what to do. So instead of your mind inside of your head about yourself, your I, the voice that is distorted, the voice that you think you are, your I is something that holds no power over you. You have no power over me, mind, that mind that lies, that mind that distorts, that mind that contorts your reality. When you disbelieve the I inside the head about the self, you are freed from 
that negative not self talk. It'll still happen. It'll still go, ooh, why did I say that? Ooh, why did I do that? And ooh, that was bad. There's something wrong. There's something inherently flawed within me. And hopefully by the end of the experience of seven years in human design, you too will have the same experience I did in that that mind no longer runs my life. So when we're looking at our life's work, this is my personal incarnation cross. I'm a cross of contagion, someone who can change your fate with the process of my mental learning and discovery, my feelings and my experience that I share with you in an empowered way. So if you're listening to my voice and you have something you know, that resonates inside of you, makes you want to listen, makes you want to pay attention, then I'm for you. If my voice disturbs you, if it's something you can't pay attention to, don't struggle, don't fight, don't push. Walk away because this is not for you at this time. I'm not the one for you. Find someone you can resonate with because all of us have an incarnative purpose in this incarnation. I'm designed to be an innocent instrument of fate who can step in and change the fate of others through learning, experience, and discovery. That is my gift. And you don't get your gift of your incarnation unless you are operating in alignment. Alignment has signposts. And misalignment has many signposts. So to give us a little bit of context, and don't worry, I will show you where the not self come from and what it says. But first, let's go back to understanding a little bit of the mechanics. Here are some crystals of consciousness. We have a personality crystal, our framework of understanding who we think we are, the imprint of our birth. And then we have our design crystal, that 88 degree movement of the sun before our birth. And we have our magnetic monopole, the monopole that is a part of that design crystal. So the mental cognition is created by the personality crystal. The body system or form cognition is created by the design crystal. And that magnetic monopole at the center of being is what is magnetizing or drawing us along our path in this life, just like the arm of a cable car does. So I want you to remember that. Now here on this slide, we can see we have an example activation of a gate. Every single crystal of consciousness is different. There is an entry point of the neutrino stream that enters into the crystal where the neutrino meets the crystal, and that is called base. From that point of entry, the base, internally, we have the tone of the crystal. And because every crystal is different, each having its own unique crystalline structure, we too are unique and essentially different from each other because that tone influences the color which influences the line, which is the expression of your specific gait. And this results in that each of us, every single one of us are designed to filter consciousness uniquely differently. And the whole point of this experiment is to discover your differentiated, unique self, your perspective, because all of us have a unique perspective. Now, a little bit of that out of the way, let's go back to the monkey mind. What is a monkey mind again? Well, Wikipedia says that it is the mind monkey, and it is a Buddhist term meaning unsettled, restless, capricious, whimsical, fanciful, inconstant, confused, indecisive, and uncontrollable. And so what happens when you live in the darkness of misidentifying with the ignorance of that which you think you are, the eye inside of the head, the inner dialogue, when you think that that is who you are, you are completely lost in the Maya. When you consider yourself only to be just this body and this mind and not the awareness or the consciousness that is shining through this form, you've lost contact with the pure alignment of being. And indeed, when you identify with that inner dialogue, 
you might tend to suffer. The more misaligned you are, the more further off your track, the more louder and louder that monkey screams because it's having an experience it does not prefer. So how did this all begin? It began when we were very, very young, back when we were little baby monkeys. <laughs> it began when we believed from the moment of our learning and awareness, we believed that there was something inherently wrong or flawed about what we were. We lost that shiny self of pure awareness. Look into a baby's eyes and that pure, you know, presence, that shining light, that spark of a soul incarnate. What happens over time as we age? Well, we have conditioning. We have the conditioning from childhood, which comes from sleeping in another's aura, right next to mama, right next to daddy, right next to our brothers and sisters. When we have a design that has a lot of openness or even has a lot of splits, and we make our decisions from our mental state, we are using the not self mind to adapt to and create strategies for the inherent belief that there's something wrong with us, that there's something flawed. So what happens is there's an incorrect digestion of life. We may live in a frictionful environment. And remember I was talking about color just a moment ago. We have what Ra calls a personality color transference and a personality view distraction. And that can come from making mental decisions, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It can be with the wrong people. And when you're operating out of integrity and you're not honoring the inherent availability of your energy to be who you are for yourself, for yourself or for others, what happens is you lose yourself in the process. So let's talk about your not self purpose. Remember I talked about the incarnation cross and your life's work, your purpose on this plane. Now let's talk about the not self purpose. Cause if you believe this not self purpose, you will not get the full fullness of the expression of your fulfillment and your life's work. And that my friends is not something anybody really wants. Now your monkey, your monkey is in disguise. Again, this monkey is pretending to be you and you believe it, I want you to remember you don't have to believe it. And the first thing you might think is, oh, how do we control the monkey mind? Give me some tips. Give me some tricks. Give me some tools. Sorry, got some bad news for you because unfortunately, you can't. You can't control that monkey mind. That mind is that, that is there all the time. You just can't. So what do you do instead? Well, you could swing back into the past and try to make sense of things. You could swing off into the future and try to anticipate things. You could just hang around waiting for something to happen. And indeed, that is what the mind tends to do. The mind wants to go, well, this is the thing that happened. And in order to prevent that thing that happened that was really painful, let's do this instead in the future. Instead of living in the present, there's less energy for that. But in the present, when you're sad, when things are lost and you feel confused, doubtful, questioning, distorted, you believe this mind, this monkey mind that makes you think if only you could do this next time, you'd be safe. Or if only you had done that instead of what you did do, everything would be OK. That whole mind self, you know, judgment all of that stuff is your mind doing its thing, your mind doing its thing. So instead of identifying with that mind, one of the things I want to give you as a tool right here, right now, instead of thinking I, I inside of the head about the self, change your vocabulary. The moment you feel that thought, remember that thought I asked you for, that thought that bothers you, instead of thinking I think, my mind thinks. And that's what I did for many years. Now I'm going to evolve it for you. And instead of thinking my mind, because really taking ownership of this I 
mind and thinking that you have responsibility, my mind isn't as helpful as saying the mind, small shift, but it's about these little tiny tweaks, these little tiny strategies I'm giving you to remember the next time you feel uncomfortable in the body, deeply uncomfortable, instead of saying, I go into the mind or it thinks because mind is an it. Mind is not who you are. It's an it. Ra would call it gas of the brain. Okay. Now, what else can we do besides, you know, disidentifying? Well, one of the things we can do is peel back the layers of our human design. We can decondition. And the only thing that leads us to that deconditioning is following our decision-making strategy. And as you do this, the first year, you peel back a little bit of the layer. And maybe the second year, you peel back a little bit more. And then the third year, it goes a little bit more. The fourth year, oh my goodness, by the fourth year, you've made a strong shift. Now, just like peeling back an onion, I'm not saying it's easy. And there will be most likely crying because this is about shattering the not self's hold on the life. And your eye has been deeply conditioned for decades more decades, the more conditioning. And we can't stop the conditioning from happening again, but we can prevent it from holding us hostage. We can prevent it from distorting our reality. And how do we decondition? Strategy and authority. That's the thing. It's all we have to do. Now, what are the not self masks that we wear? these not self masks, what does it sound like? What does it feel like? What does the monkey mind say? Well, it says I have to promise and do this so that I can prove I'm good enough. And it also says, I can't tell them how I feel. These are examples. I can't tell them what I'm really going through. Who am I? Where am I going actually? And I'm afraid I can't let go of this person, of that job. It also says, is this supposed to be interesting? And it also says, am I supposed to think like that too? And it also says, faster, faster, faster. And it also says, yes, I can do that too. So those are just some examples of what the monkey mind says and where it's coming from. Now, when you look down at your body graph and you see an open center, an uncolored, undefined center, you're more likely to amplify and distort the function of that center and overdo it with the thematic of that center. These are vortices of energy. These are energy hubs that show us where you're going to school. And that's why your mind is obsessing about what's going on over there, because that's what you're learning about in this lifetime. It's not a bad thing. Monkey mind is not a bad thing. It's just not your boss. Okay, so when we look at what happens because of the repeated decision making, why does it say that? It says that because of the mental conditioning. Conditioning gets crystallized into the cells as behaviors which are designed to avoid pain, trauma, and suffering become mental patternings, become habits, become ritual, become routine. So much so that by the time you're an adult, 30 years old, when you're an adult, this becomes your reality and what you think you think you are. Oof. So what does your mind say? What does your monkey say? Let's go through some more examples. Now, I want you to remember it's blah, 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 blah. It's gas of the brain. It's the mind. It's not my mind. It's not your mind. It's conditioning. Inside the head, about the self, the I cannot be trusted. It's an it. So let's talk about the it, just really to ram that point home. Well, it says I'm never good enough. And it says, don't leave me. And in order to resolve its loneliness, it says, who can I have sex with? And what else does it say? It says, well, I'm not worthy, though. And it says, who am I really? And it says, why am I so nervous? And it also says, you have to do better. And you make sure you fit in. 
and don't rock the boat. Don't tell the truth. That's this, this, the decisions that it thinks you have to make in order to resolve that openness. So then the decision, it makes a decision to take action. I'll prove myself. I'm going to be like them. And I'm going to pretend it's all okay. Until it gets to the point where it's screaming. And it's screaming and its behaviors say, appreciate me. Love me. And pay attention to me. Okay. <laughs> and this is a lot of fun, right? Because it's making you make choices from needing external validation of your existence. So they sing their song when they sing together. Validate our existence. So that we know that we're worthy, but it's never enough because it's always going to be undefined. It's an unwinnable game. And what happens? We're unworthy because we don't know who we are and we're so nervous. Why are we so sensitive? We have to pretend that everything's fine and we know what the is going on. And that is a mind, not self-state. It gets to the point so much so that what happens is, thanks for sharing, but I'm not caring, is what you get from other people when you make those decisions out of integrity and out of alignment. And what does that do? Bring you right back home to, I'm not good enough, or whatever the case may be, whatever you think is wrong or fundamentally flawed with you. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, somebody please save me, I'm scared. That might be something that you're thinking in your life. When you're terrified, when you're fearful, when you're scared, you're looking for somebody to rescue, somebody to save, somebody to fix. Now, give you some hope here. Don't worry. We got this. We got some solutions for you, my friends. And it's not about anyone outside of you coming here to rescue you. You have everything inside of yourself, everything you personally need in order to break that not self mind's hold on your life. So let's go into the solutions. You guys ready? How is that landing for you so far? Hopefully it's helping, helping. Now, here on this slide, we have the first primary and most important thing is to be aligned to your design. All right, knowing your type, first things first, our manifestors, innovators in the BG5 career and business application of human design, get it going. They inform to impact. Generators provide the energy to build our career builders, build things in satisfying ways in response. Projectors guide the energy to succeed through recognition and invitation, mutual recognition and invitation in order to advise their career type. And reflectors display how well it's going. The ability to evaluate and display the surprise of what life has in store. So that's the first thing. Now, this can seem really simple. And you might say, Lavina, how the heck can all of humanity fit into four different categories. Well, underneath each of these categories, we have subtypes. And that's something that you learn about should you decide to go into deeper layers of the human design system. Now, secondarily, we use our strategy for taking action. Manifestors, your strategy is to inform first and then act. Inform to impact. Generators responding, wait for the response before engaging. Projectors recognizing, wait to be recognized and invited. Reflectors assessing, wait, assess, discuss, and reflect. Now the third, top three, be your own authority. You, my friends, are in charge of being aligned to your design. No one else can do it for you. Now, each of our types have their own personal process of authority. So that, my friends, top three, one, two, three, just do those things. And at some point, you will find after seven years, especially you have a body that's more relaxed. 
you have a mind that has less of a grip, less of a hold, less of an authority on your life. You take that I'm the boss cap off that it, that mind. It is not who you are. Now, another thing that you could do is just don't feed the monkey mind. What is food anyway? It's information. It's energy. So don't give that monkey mind those thoughts, energy. Again, that I inside of your head is not who you are. Your mind's stories, they're just mechanical blah, blah, blahs. We can see them in the human design chart and they can be deconstructed. You can literally see where they are coming from. So one of my favorite things to do in my classes is analyze the not self-purpose because it's spot on usually. And what happens is you can see where your memory warps. You can see the lie of your mind. And most people fall into the trap of believing that mind. They believe the mind knows what's really going on, that it's telling the truth. It does that in order to protect you. And it does that in order to manipulate you because it's wanting to manipulate the situation, convincing you that if you say it like this or you do it like that, you're going to get what you think you want in life. Got to break it to you, my friends. What you think inside of your head that you want in life is not really what's in store for you. And if you've lived enough of life, I'm 44, almost 45, you get to see that what you think you want when you actually get it, not necessarily what you thought it was going to bring you. So learning to see the mind's stories for what they are, just fingers pointing at the not self-purpose the beginning of the transformation of your openness to wisdom is not identifying with the eye, with the mind, with the monkey. Now, there's an ancient Japanese proverb, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. There are these three wise monkeys, and they're illustrated to with the thought of protecting yourself from unsavory or challenging behavior, thought, or language. Now, in human design, we have our ways that we're designed to not only speak, but also listen and hear, and also to see different ways that we see, hear, speak, and listen. And if you can align to the correctness of your design, just witness and watch. This is not about making your mind bad. It's not the bad guy. What the problem is, is making a decision because of mind when it usurps your authority, when it distorts your reality. That's the issue. That is what creates crystallized conditioning. That is what locks it in. Instead of recognizing that you are someone who does align, you believe the story that you should do this or should do that. Let go of the mind. Now, HD teaches that you are not in charge of what you think. So instead of owning the thoughts and identifying with the I, again, start to observe them in third person. The mind thinks instead of my, yeah? And so you say, that's interesting that you think that mind. Thank you very much, because the mind likes to weigh and measure. Yeah, it wants to do a good job. So give it a pat on the head. Go ahead. But then let's go check in them with the body. Follow the body. The body knows. The body does not lie. You don't have to judge the thoughts, even though the mind lies. Remember, use the tool of it or the instead of my, instead of I. And that was from that uh, beautiful attaching to the mind's I, you know, thinking that you are who you think you are back in the seven centered era of using the mind to manipulate life to distort and control. That's not who we are anymore. And that was part of an ancient, you know, civilization, but they still even then they knew, they knew that the mind had evil, that there were lies. Okay, now, one of the things that might make this easier, just to experiment with my friends, I am not the boss of you either. But try See what it make it the difference it makes if you do sleep alone. This is just about good sleep. Okay. Just about good sleep. Get good sleep. Sleep in your own aura so that you can wake up refreshed because there are things that happen when we are asleep. 
we have a type change. It's called the dream rave. And not only can our own type change, but other people's types can change. And so if you're having bad sleep, oh boy, that can really screw up our existence. So make sure you get the best sleep possible. And if you aren't already doing so, experiment with sleeping alone. Another thing you can do is spend time alone. Time alone is a precious, valuable, regenerative resource. Because what can happen now, the pictures in the family earlier, that was my actual family that I'm showing you here, my father, my brother, my mother, my sister. And here's me, the sole projector child in a heavily Penta activated, Penta three to five people, Penta, a unified group. And we did have a unified group, all of the gate activations there that are pulling us into a certain set of behaviors because we were controlled. We are controlled in our families. We are not who we really are in our families, even in a partnership. So my seventh recommendation is to spend time alone, most especially right before bed. So you can, especially if you're an undefined sacral person, de-stress, clean out your energy frequency, your energy field. And if you are not non-sacral defined and you spend time with a generator late at night, you know how hard it is to get to sleep. So experiment with this one. I know it will help you. So that you can just let go. You can let go of trying to prove. You can let go of trying to pretend. You can let go of trying to being someone else. You can let go of what no longer serves you. You can let go of trying to be interesting or trying to be right. You can let go of get everything done yourself or of other people's pressures and stress. And you can let go of trying to initiate the conversation. Just let go. You don't need those things. Every place that you're open, it's a lesson of learning to let go. Number nine is you can use healthy center functions. So know your functions, know what they are, know their consistencies, know their availabilities, get to know your design and the healthy or unhealthy way that it shows up to give you further signposts to know when you're on track and when you're off track. Now, another thing that you can do, use your channels, the life force energy, and that goes right back to strategy and authority because that's where it comes from if you have channels. So channels in the design help us align. They are our superpowers. They are our strengths. They are our gifts. They are our consistencies. They are our uniqueness. Such a narrow, narrow, narrow point of imprinting on one side with planetary activations, sometimes multiple, unique to you, and a narrow, narrow place on the other side that gives us the fullness of the expression of these centers through these channels, through these ways of being ourself. Now, conditioning problems, oh, so many. Again, I'm going to show you some of the ways that this mind distorts and makes you believe that you need to do what it says, what happens. Because you feel not good enough and you're overcompensating, you're desperate to prove your worth and find external validation. You overdo it by promising and proving, and you are literally killing yourself by working too hard, by working too much, by chasing after things that you think are going to achieve something in order to prove that you're valuable, in order to earn appreciation in order to have love in your life because you think that you have to be the best. That's a problem when you operate out of integrity with your design. You make decisions that are distorting your purpose because you're chasing after things in a desperate attempt to prove your value when in fact you have nothing to prove in this lifetime. Another thing that happens is you avoid confrontation and truth. You learn to lie from childhood and you become touchy, nervous, and defensive when it comes to your emotional and social relational context in the world, your place in the world. What else happens? You get role confusion because you're trying to be something or someone that you're not. 
you run after, you chase, you pretend, you lie. And all of these things lead to being unable to let go of fear, feeling rigid and inflexible. And so you hold on to people, places, things, jobs, anything that you think is going to ensure your survival because you pretend you're certain and you're mentally defensive and you're arguing in order to pretend that you're certain so that you can prove your point, that you're smart and that you are what you think the other person needs you to think you are in order to earn appreciation, value, love, and approval. Because you don't know when enough is enough and you're overzealous. You overdo, you try to do everything and be everything to everybody so that you can answer everyone else's questions. But you're thinking about things that don't matter to you because you're trying to do everything fast and you're in too much of a hurry and you can't slow down and you're talking too much, trying to be the center of attention. Those are some problems when you make decisions from that. So, Number 11, what can you watch instead? Your wisdom potential is in that openness. The wisdom is for others in correct alignment when they ask, when they invite, when they inform. When you have a clear connection between the two, you have so much wisdom to give. When you do not identify with the eye inside of your head about yourself, when you learn to observe the mechanics behind the stories, it helps break the identification with the mind's eye. And what happens is awareness develops. Awareness is not about changing the mind. It's about learning. It's about learning the mechanics of mind. It's learning and going through an ongoing witnessing adventure, this educational journey. And it's through the practice of radical transformations of this life through your observation of what is worthy and what do we feel and what is love and what is healthy, who is healthy and what really is interesting and who really is interested and interesting and who really is certain because they're inspired, because they're aware how do we really manage stress and handle stress? How do we use energy? How do we use energy wisely? Okay. The last and most important thing I want to impart to you is actually quite a bit of information for newcomers to the design. So if you are brand new and you start to get lost, don't worry. The rest of this is for people who have been in this for some time. Okay, so number 12, if you've already experimented with all those things, everything I set up until this point was review. My next invitation to you is to go radical. So in our design here, we can see an advanced Maya mechanics snapshot, Ra Ruhu's design. We can see why, why we have a monkey mind underneath the surface, a above and beyond all of those things I just gave you as a mental description of why you need to do what you think you need to do, where, how you think you need to behave and so forth and so on. So when you are not operating in alignment, those thoughts, that motivation, that cognition, this is where it's coming from for him, symmetry, desire, and action. When you are not operating in alignment, you don't get access to your cognitive potential. You don't get access. Remember those deep layers underneath the surface that I began our presentation with, looking at base, tone, color, line, gate. When you are not operating in alignment, you don't get the full flowering of your incarnative purpose, sun and earth, your life's work. You don't get the perspective that is right for you so that you can see clearly all of this, it's like looking through a very dirty front car window that hasn't been bathed, washed in months, and you live on a dusty road. Imagine that. You just can't see. And that's where I want to invite you, if you are ready, to continue to pay attention. If you're full, if it's enough, this is a good stopping point for you.
If you're ready to go radical, you're ready to go deeper, I'm going to share a little bit more with you. When we come to this area of mind, unfortunately, we can't heal it. We can't. You can't heal a not self mind because it's not about healing. It's not about healing. It's about breaking through those barriers to awareness. It can be torn down. It can be shattered. And then it can be reassembled as something else. Mutation must take place within you. Empowerment must happen within you to be your own authority. And in order for that to happen, we have to establish a strong foundation within you that you can follow your strategy, that you can honor your authority, that you can stop looking outside of yourself instead of believing that somebody else knows better than you. Instead of that, come back home to who you really are in this life, what this life really is all about. It's all about awareness. So the next place I'm going to take you is Why does awareness get screwed up? Why does it get distorted? It gets distorted because you're not operating from strategy and authority. Therefore, that beautiful G center, you remember that um, rail car I showed you, the cable car? That cable car is not taking you in the right direction because you're not facing the right direction. You're not in the right environment. You're not taking in the right information. You're not processing according to your uniqueness, according to your difference. The moment you stop comparing yourself to anybody else and you recognize your sovereignty and you align to your authority and you believe you, this body, because it's the only thing it can be that can be trusted. You can't believe your government. You can't believe your friends. You can't believe your boss. You can't believe me. You can't believe your mom. You can't believe your dad. You can't believe your best friend. You can't believe any of it outside of yourself. You have the reality of this body, the body being the life. And I could explain all of this to you, and ultimately, it doesn't matter. We have to go back to strategy and authority so that what happens is we get the pure motivational frequencies instead of the transference. Okay, transference is what happens on a mechanical level underneath the surface of your awareness. Now, this next piece, being able to watch the transference, being able to witness and be the passenger, it's very, very sensitive to birth time. So don't try to take on this information if your birth time is in question. Try to find a precise time. The biggest danger is to try and identify and map yourself onto this than acting from a contrived space. Oh, I'm this motivated, so I'm going to do this because I know that this is my design. Mm -mm. Don't do it. I've been there, done that. It's about being an observer, just witnessing and watching. It's not about changing anything. It's just about seeing that not self-mind. And when you do that for the first time, You're separating from the mechanics of your personality. You're actually actually observing and transcending it. You're poking your head through the sky, as Ra liked to say. It was one of his favorite images that he actually used for the Jovian logo. So now here's a picture of Ra's chart. And I want to read to you something from Ra here. One of the things that he would say is the goal in life is to transcend characteristics and to find one's role. Your role comes from your life's work. So if you're operating according to strategy and authority, there is an alignment that takes place in what is called the independent variable. That alignment is between the design nodes and the personality nodes. When the design nodes are literally in the right place, moving in the right direction. This aligns the personality nodes and it points it at what it resonates to. In other words, pointing at what is good for it to pay attention to. Yet, if the personality enters into transference, there is an immediate impact on the node. And the immediate impact on the node is that it loses its general view. Not completely. It gets distracted. It gets distracted. 
Okay. So that's another thing that can happen besides our motivational color transference. So because of the nodes and their relationship to each other, from design to personality, there is a holding get together of the correct view, but it can also get distracted. So when you're seeing, when there's that distraction, along with that fact that there's lack of cognition or your mental conceptualizing and awareness process, it means that your transferred mind jumps on the distraction as something important and what you're really supposed to be looking at. And then you don't have that real concentration on what you're intended to be looking at. So the foundation for the way the mind is going to develop its concepts, its awareness, totally off. And that's where we lose access to what we are here to be, to our purpose. Because there's no one here like you, period. You cannot compare yourself and your process or your life to anyone else on this planet. We are built from the ground up in that neutrino stream, giving us the color of our life. In the advanced Maya mechanics imaging software, we see the differentiation. We see the uniqueness. And below the surface, all of those things that we were just looking at, we don't have conscious access to. Just like the depth that man has drilled to, about 7.7 .7 miles. It's not here. Can't, it doesn't even reach color. Okay. This is just looking at what it's like. Gate and line are what show up at the surface, but down below the surface, underneath our awareness of our conscious control, we have all of these things that feed up into the uniqueness of who we are. So if you want to understand what we're talking about here, we have to dive into variable. Now, variable is an advanced area of the knowledge. It is what separates us above and beyond type into cognitive families. So we can look at the advanced Maya mechanics and see where these things are coming from. Now, what is variable? Here's those 16 different families that Ra gave us, 16 different ways of enlightenment, of processing paths of awareness. But what happens because of our distortion and our conditioning, instead of having the fullness of our uniqueness and our differentiation, what we have is a lot of people pretending to be active and strategic instead of actually having an alignment with what we're here to be. So what happens is more and more life eats away at your uniqueness because you believe that you must do or think or behave in accordance with what the mind believes. And then that's what is, this is what is the result. Conditioned towards homogenization and sameness. Thinking that you're wrong or bad if you're not like this. That is an ancient cognition. Nothing wrong with it. We need the wholeness of everyone. We need everyone. Everyone is unique. Everyone is different. Everyone has a purpose, a place, and a role. But what happens when you believe the not self and the mind story? It eats away at your cognitive difference. And you don't have access to the truth that is inherent, fundamentally inherent within your design, our cognitive intelligence. Correct mental cognition comes when you are no longer making mental decisions. What's the key? Strategy and authority. That's all there is. Now, for some of us, it isn't enough. So how you make decisions is what is going to heal you in this life. And all of this is really interesting. But the hard part, the rewarding part, and the most challenging part it's to get your mind to let go of what it thinks its job description is. So go ahead. Take that I'm the boss cap off your mind. Put your eye inside of your head about yourself in the back seat and let life take care of itself. Okay. So that you are not cut off from your cognition. My radical transformation clinics, 
analyst training programs, we go through these ways that we're here to have cognitive difference. We go through these six radical ways that we are here to have cognitive truths. Mental cognition is something that you have no access to when you are in transference. And that transference is not a bad thing. It's actually a key to our awareness. So when we're looking at our color motivations, they are in response to life. And what Ross says is that in seven years of following your strategy and honoring your authority, you'll experience you without any question. You'll experience your aligned motivation. Now, again, remember, we have no conscious access to that color. And the dilemma is we are designed to have a unique differentiated cognitive difference, but we have no access to it, no control over it. So the consciousness access, the conscious access ends where the illusion begins. The illusion starts with the line, that line, which the color colors, that line, which the tone informs, that line, which has at its base an entry frequency. So the most important thing I can tell you is that we need to operate correctly through the form, that that form is essential. Your body is the life. We are aware through these beautiful dualistic spectrums. And through these color keynotes, we can find that movement between the correct aligned path. Now, it's just about developing awareness. It's not about judging yourself bad or wrong. These trajectories, we're all objects moving in space. This movement is what we're here to witness. And right back at to the beginning, we have our strategy and authority. We can do the dance of our uniqueness. Ta-da, we're back with strategy and authority. So at this point, I'm gonna take a pause and see if there's any questions that we have in our Q&A box. I don't see any Q&A questions. So at this moment, I'd like to invite some Q&A questions if you have any, and I will finish our conversation with inviting you. If the first part of this presentation was new, we have Julie Hamilton, who is a 6'3", left angle cross of the alpha, emotional projector with splenic definition and a Jita throat split. She is going to be creating a new living your design for all types. It's a 10 session course and it's be coming up very soon starting next month. We also have radical transformation clinics. If this is something that is new to you on the latter part of the webinar, we have a process of taking you through, it's like a living your design, just like Julie's class, like a living your design, but it's at a whole nother level. It's at a deeper level. And we talk about the things that I dove into and touched upon that might have been new to you. So that is something that you can take if you have taken living your design. I want to finish with a quote from Adya Shanti. She's one of, he's one of my favorite mental projectors. A good spiritual teaching helps you to hone in on your own truth, to become quiet and to listen deeply and openly enough so that you can literally begin to feel the way life is informing you. That is your inner wisdom. That's your inner teacher. And it's the beginning of standing in your true autonomy. Thank you so much for your time, for your availability, for your energy, for your sharing, for your growth, for your communion. And if you'd like to join us for more of these in person in the future, we're at humandesign.live. Namaste.